Hi, everybody. Welcome to my interview today. And today I'm excited that I'm interviewing three women that are teachers in our community. I'm going to start this off with a quote. A teacher is like a candle. It consumes itself to light the way for others. I thought this was a great way to start this interview today. Um, I have three women here that are all teachers in our school district. We're doing um, elementary, middle school, and high school. I think you'll find this informative and be able to um, better understand how they're doing and things that you could do better in order to help make sure that you are feeling good about your e-learning um, current environment. So American schools are closed and nearly all of the 56.6 million school age children have been sent home. Teachers are now shouldering the impossible task of trying to replicate the functions of schools for months with act without the actual school building. Teachers now have to completely rewrite their planners and learn new technologies and learn how to teach every student from home. Today, I'm speaking with three teachers in our district to find out how they're doing during the COVID-19 quarantine. Mrs. Day, Mrs. Powers, and Mrs. Town, thank you for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. All right, good. Well, that only took four times to get through that. So, okay. So I am, I'm, I'm going to start off with um, just asking you to each tell me a little bit about yourself um, and how long you've been teaching and anything else you feel is important. So we'll start off with Mrs. Town. Hi, I'm Michaela Town and I am at Lake Zurich High School. I am a Spanish teacher and I have been at Lake Zurich for 15 years. And I also have a six-year-old daughter um, who we uh, live in the school district and she is in bilingual kindergarten at Seth Payne and a four-year-old son who is in preschool uh, here locally as well. Very good, thank you. Mrs. Day? Um, my name is Marcia Day. So I've been at Lake Zurich now for about 25 years teaching at Middle School North. I teach eighth grade science. I also have three children. Uh, I have one college student who is in his sophomore year and he studies at Illinois Institute of Technology. And then I have two high schoolers, a freshman and a junior. So Busy. we're, we're right. very- <laughs> uh, Mrs. Powers, how about you? Hi, I am Angie Powers. I have been teaching in the district for four years now and I have four of my own children. And I teach at Isaac Fox, fifth grade, sorry. But I have, my oldest is Brendan, and he is soon to be a 15-year-old, so he's a freshman at Lake Zurich. And I have Brady, who is seventh grade, middle school north, so he's 13. And then Cameron is actually Spencer Loomis, fifth grade, and he's 11. And Brooklyn is my youngest, uh, and she is second grade, uh, seven years old at Spencer Loomis. Very good. Okay, thank you guys. All right, let's get started. Mrs. Day, let's start with you. We all know that structure is important. How would you coach a parent today to establish rules and routines with homework? Well, that's a loaded question. <laughs> um, there's a couple of things I think parents can do um, that if you work from home during this pandemic, there's one thing that I find very helpful for kids is that structure. You need to set that structure. And in order for you to do that, you probably would need, depending on the age of your child, um, sit down with them and say, okay, what is your start time? What time do you want to get up? And when is your end time? And I think that's important because they're, they're used to going to school with a start time and an end time. I think also we need to make sure when we create the schedule that you follow their day. So if they have PE first hour, then they would work on PE first hour. And then also I would embed in there the breaks and the lunch or recess, depending on their age, so that they have, again, that structure. The other thing that I would do is limit the time that they're working on the work. So I know um, ISB in our district has given some guidelines and I would follow those guidelines. A safe guideline for middle school students would be like, no more than 30 minutes on a subject and then you move on. Um, the other thing that I would do too with um, the students and encourage parents to do is help them to create a priority list. What is it the things that you need to accomplish in today's e-learning? And make that list old-fashioned, pencil and paper. There's something about taking a pen and crossing off your list is very satisfying, right? Or at least for me, anyway, it's very satisfying. So I think students can see their progression and that may help with their motivation. The other thing too is if they don't finish an assignment, then they know that they can move that assignment to the next day and add it to their list so that they are kind of working on some time management and self-management skills as well. So 
you know, but working parents is a little bit different. So if you're still working outside the home, that type of schedule could be challenging. I mean, you can still set that up with your student, but then I would really encourage uh, that you have a time in your evening that you do a check-in with your child and say, okay, let me see that priority list. Let me see if you turn things in because I know as working parents, if we're not at home, it's very hard to monitor and check in. Um, we have the best intentions, the students have best intentions, but I always think that we need to give them that follow-up and that accountability piece at the end of the day, no matter what their age is, so that we can give positive reinforcements on what they have accomplished. That is my suggestion. <laughs> I think that is fantastic. That hits almost everything. Um, great. That was perfect. I mean, I'm trying to Im implement many of those things, not quite all of them, but many of them. So thank you. Uh, Mrs. Powers, you're at elementary level and they were basically handed an iPad the last day of school that they didn't use on a regular basis prior to leaving the building. How have your kids been adjusting to e-learning? Yeah, that's a great question because they were, um, you know, everything happened so quickly and we were able, thank goodness, in this district to get those devices out to fourth and fifth graders, which was fantastic. Um, at first, my own children, my fifth grade, you know, they're very excited. No school, wait, we're home? Like they were super excited. Um, but I think they have adjusted pretty well, as Mrs. Day mentioned, like it took a little bit of time to be um, truthfully honest to get that structure set especially with myself doing lessons. My husband now is here working too. So we all had to adjust to a new structure, but now we're kind of like really adhering to that. And I think the kids are finding their own little place to work, which is really helpful. Um, and so I think they're so tech savvy anyway, um, you know, that they were actually, they helped me like, no, hit this button or hit that button. So they've been doing a pretty good job in that area and, and adjusting really to like a different reality. So um, it has been really helpful. I know I'm pretty fortunate in my own position to have like my freshmen helping my second grader. So when we're on the same Zoom calls at the same time, he's able to quickly go help her. So I know everybody's situation is different, but that's just kind of how we've adjusted. Um, but I really, I, I think it's, I was so appreciative as a parent in the district of how Dr. Galt was very like transparent with her communication and everything was pretty open. So we understood. And she made it very clear to the students that, you know, especially high school, middle school, like this is still school and you still need to work. So I know we went through that with my own children and I told them like, this is still a priority. And so we had that conversation. So that really did help the older, my older, my older children. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with that. I think that the, the younger kids, all the kids at first thought, oh, okay, great. And it was the week before spring break. And then all of a sudden yeah. it became more of a reality that, wow, okay, we need to change things up a little bit. Um, Mrs. Town, you would think high schoolers should be able to adjust to e-learning a little bit more easily than elementary kids, um, but you have two little ones at home. So if I were to ask you, who's easier, the high schoolers or your little ones? Well, they both present different challenges. <laughs> My little ones at home can't read. So that is a challenge in and of itself that I have to be reading their e-learning assignments to them. Um, they are not very self-sufficient on that. Um, even on the iPad, um, you know, navigating around there is not something that they are familiar with, with, with good reason. Um, and so I would say that definitely getting, doing the e-learning with them is harder for me um, than it is with my high school students because my high school students are pretty self-sufficient. Um, but in a way, I feel worse for the high school kids because I feel like the, you know, little kids are adaptable. They're, you know, easily put into one situation and into another. And my daughter's in kindergarten, so she hasn't even been in school for a year. Um, whereas my seniors, they've been doing the same thing in the same way for 12 years. And now all of a sudden, you know, the you know, month and two, two months before they graduate, we're going to do something completely different. Um, so for them, I feel that, you know, although they are able to, you know, complete assignments and whatnot on their own without a ton of guidance um, for me, unless they have a question, uh, I do feel bad in the sense that this is not how they have learned for any part of their schooling. Um, and then you couple that with high school being a place where not just the learning takes place, but the social emotional, where they're there, you know, participating in activities and that's kind of their, you know, escape from home and they get to be with their friends and there's so much writing on, you know, high school and, you know, 
the, the social aspect that I feel, you know, very bad for, you know, those kids that are now trapped in their bedroom for, you know, six hours a day doing homework in front of a screen. I, I agree with that. I think the social part is something that we all as parents and you as teachers need to keep a lookout for because these kids are, are missing out on that daily interaction that gives them a sense of independence. Um, okay, Mrs. Day, what would you say is one of the biggest challenges that you're dealing with? Um, that I'm dealing with personally, um, I think it's, uh, well, socialization. I mean, as, as, as funny as that sounds, um, I miss the students. I mean, I go up, you know, to school every day. I go in the morning and, you know, you have conversations, you check in with them. Um, I just miss that interaction with them. And even when we Zoom um, or do Canvas conferences, um, it's not the same. You know, I can't like really monitor or see like they're nonverbal so much. Mm -hmm. um, so you kind of miss those connection pieces with the kids. Um, so I think that is the biggest, for me teaching wise, um, I miss that, right? And I miss giving them that affirmation and saying, oh, look, look, you actually are doing the problem or you wrote this correctly. And I can't necessarily see that all the time on the Zoom. Um, but I think that's the biggest challenge too for also for them like Ms. Towney said, that, you know, socialization is a big thing at middle school and, and at high school, probably even elementary as well, too. Um, they need to Zoom or they need to have some connection with their classmates just to keep that motivation piece going. Because if they start losing that motivation piece, it's really hard to get them motivated to accomplish what they need to do because it is still school, right? So right. Mm -hmm. I think that's the I biggest agree, part. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Powers, what do you want parents to know about what e-learning looks like for teachers? Well, I can speak to the elementary level, as I know high school, middle school already had like technology in place. Um, so for us, we use it in the classroom, but it looks quite different here at home. So I've always said technology and I are kind of acquaintances, not really friends, but I think one of the things I now can say is that technology and I are pretty much best friends. So <laughs> we've really given ourselves the opportunity to try these different platforms and it really is learning for us. I mean, it's a lot of taking the curriculum, which we left behind and like adapting it to um, the digital version. So for us, it's been pretty awesome in terms of our colleagues. We've really worked really well together but it is just about learning this, this, these different platforms for instruction. So it has been a really good thing and it can be frustrating at times because you never know with technology, it's a little scary. Like, oh my goodness, what do I do, push this button? So, <laughs> so we're trying out those aspects, but- We, we might really be losing nice a little bit of you right now, can, um, but we'll get back in. Okay, can you hear me okay now? I can hear you now. You're good. Okay. <laughs> um, sorry, we almost, we lost you for a quick second there. No problem. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Town, uh, you know, you touched on something that was really important, the social aspects. If you could speak directly to your students and, I mean, you know, middle school kids too and elementary kids, what, would, what kind of advice would you give the kids right now? Well, I, I would first say there. This, this situation Gotta love Zoom. Better word. Um, uh, this situation. Mrs. Town, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can, can I can hear you? Hear me? Yeah, I can. Hear you. I can hear you. And you're Maybe all you, Sam. Sam. That's good. <laughs> Sam, can you hear me? Sam is like not quite. <laughs> so the rest of us can hear each Welcome. other, not the moderator. <laughs> Welcome to Zoom. All right, there we go. A little bit okay. better. All right, what like would it. you say to your students? Okay. Um, so I would first say that recognizing and feeling what the situation is, it's, it's a it's a stinky situation. You know, I, it's it's hard for everybody and recognizing that and, you know, coming to grips with the fact that this is not this is not where any of us really want to be for the most part. Um, we, we want the face-to-face -face interaction. We want that social interaction. Um, and so I, just basically being honest with yourself and saying, I, I need whatever it is. I need to FaceTime my friends during the day. Or I had some former students call me um, last week on my birthday and tell me that they had done like meet up in the parking lot, but stay in their cars because they just needed to be able to see other people. Um, so I feel like you, you need to, now is the time to, 
take care of yourself and what you need to do, whether that's getting outside and doing your, you know, e-learning outdoors whenever it's nice, or, you know, just making sure that you're staying in contact with people that you would have talked to during a regular school day. Um, you know, this will pass, this isn't our forever, um, but in the interim, you know, making sure that you're taking care of, you know, your social needs just as much as you are your academic ones. All right, I think that was perfectly said. Okay, we're gonna have a little fun. Do you guys have your yes and no signs? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna ask you guys some questions oh, and all you have to do- Spanish. I know, I, mean, I, had, I had to do it in Spanish. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. All right, good. So I will ask you the question and you will hold up your answer. Um, I miss seeing my students in person. Oh. Mm. Very good. You guys are good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, this emphatic my, yes. This, this is my favorite one. I miss Bells reminding me when to do things. <laughs> yes. Okay. So it's a I reminder of when to eat and when to not eat. Yeah. <laughs> when to go to the bathroom. This is your lunch time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, I have found that my kids create better stories on why they didn't finish their homework in quarantine. Yes, my own children. <laughs> I'm just backwards. Yes. My, yeah, number one I hear is, I turned it in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I got the other day, I didn't know where to find it. I was like, okay, well. <laughs> um, I miss printing things. Shows you my age. Old no. school. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I have seen very interesting names and even guests on Zoom. Backgrounds. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Yes. Okay, yeah. Those guys. Are high um, for you. I think I'm getting better at e-learning. Mrs. Powers, we know that you have, right? <laughs> yes. Very good. Yes. Um, parents make better teachers. Mm, okay, Mrs. I, this Powers. Is me personally. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Powers, please explain. Well, I think like, you know, for yes, they do because you really do know your own children and how to help them best. But then, but then no, because then they can really like find a way to, when you're tired to like tell you something and then you're like, okay, sure you did it. And then that you find they didn't. So like, kind of like, it kind of is a good thing, but also not a good thing. <laughs> I agree. All right. I, I'm not a good e-learning kindergarten teacher. I <laughs> that. High school, maybe, but it, not kindergarten or preschool for that matter. Yes. Um, kindergartners should not have to remember. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to say it. Kindergartners should not have to remember passwords. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> a lot of times, yes. Um, Okay, and my also students think adults are should not remember passwords either. <laughs> or just have one. I'm just saying, just have one generic cryptic code. Yes, I, I agree with that. Um, my students are easier than my own children at e-learning. Oh, very nice. Bravo to your kids. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm quoting this because as I was researching for questions for you guys, um, I got a post from the New York Times um, talking about how parents are struggling. And it basically said, with teachers regulated to computer screens, parents have to play teacher's aide, hall monitor, counselor, and cafeteria worker, all while trying to do their own jobs under extraordinary circumstances. Essential workers are in perhaps the toughest spot, especially if they are away from the home during school hours, leaving just one parent or no one at all at home when students need them the most. Um, I, in closing, I, I just wanna thank you guys for what you're doing. Uh, we know you had to completely turn your lives around um, and redo everything. And I think you guys are doing a great job. Um, anybody wanna say anything in closing? Um, I, thought, I just wanna thank like this community and the parents at the elementary level have been so supportive and so patient and kind with us elementary teachers trying to move forward. And just to kind of remember for parents who I know um, everybody touched on the, the social emotional piece to really make sure you're taking care of your kids and that we're trying at the elementary level to send videos of saying hi so the kids can smile um, and just doing like a lot of emotional check-ins with the kids. So to just to remember to just take care of them and their emotions too. Yeah, I think that our district okay. did a wonderful job getting 
ahead of the eight ball, not just with the e-learning, but also making sure that students and families who needed it were going to get the food that they needed and supplies and things like that. Um, so I was very appreciative for our district for being one of the, the leaders in the area um, in that uh, respect. So. Absolutely. I, I could not agree more that I think our district as a parent is doing an excellent job. I did reach out to Mrs. Galt to see if she would do an interview. So if you guys have, can pull any strings for me. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Day, did you want to say anything? Um, no, just they both said it beautifully that I think we are lucky enough to be in a great district that it has the foresight and we had the training and we also have a great community partnership which a lot of areas may not have, but Lake Zurich has that. And that has been really the strong cornerstone for our district is our parent involvement and the support. And it goes, you know, both ways. So parents are, are great about giving us feedback and, and we, we definitely take that feedback and hopefully can help them and help us to further their student's education too. Yeah, I feel, I feel like Mrs. Galt and not just her, but the entire District 95 staff went from zero to 100 very quickly and um, did it perfectly. Um, I haven't heard anybody complain about anything. So speaking of the eight ball, I figured we would end this with an eight ball question. So my eight ball question is going to be, are we going to go back to school physically in the fall? Yes, please. Please make it a good answer. Don't count on it. Oh, no. no. <laughs> oh, it's going so well. That's two out of All right. three. <laughs> I'm, thank you guys for your time today. Um, I appreciate it. And I hope you guys all have a great, I don't even know what day it is, but a great day. Um, and go enjoy your own families. And I hope they're all cooking dinner for you. Wouldn't that be nice? Thank you. All right. Thanks, Sam. All right. Thank you.